that's the problem, see that's the problem, that's the problem, see that's the problem, yeah, that's the problem, see that's the problem. Man. Glad you're here. Uh, uh, see that's the problem. <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> this is technically episode two. Yes. But we have we have one in the bonus. middle of this one, yeah, the bonus, and we are wearing the same clothes because it's the same day. We trying to we trying to knock this stuff out. We got more work to do, so we can't yeah. be all in here. I I would love Facts. I would love to do it, but she's the one that's like, oh, we actually gotta get something done. 100%. Whatever. All right. <laughs> but we are starting this episode off. Yes. With Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner. If you ain't heard of her. She is a WNBA star. She is. Okay? So she's a hooper. She do her thing on the court. Yeah. But here's the thing. I don't know her stats, but I do She's know good. She's pretty good. She's that's good. all that's all I know. Okay, she's good. Yeah. I don't know the stats, but I do know she travels a lot. She does. She travels a lot. <laughs> and on this day, she happened to be traveling to Russia. <laughs> She was she going got to on, Russia. She got on the wrong plane. I'm just going to be honest. She got on the wrong plane on she that day. She went to Florida, but she went to Russia. All right, so she But I love, I love my Russian friends, too. I don't want that to, to be like we saying something. Yeah, don't I, take it the wrong don't way. Don't take it. Don't I, take it the I wrong love. Way. I know nothing about Russia. Yeah, see, see that's the problem. We, we tell a lot of jokes. Yeah, I love all of my Russian all friends. Right, in all too. seriousness, she was packing her bags, okay, mm. her luggage. She got her shoes, her socks, her toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> her luggage. <laughs> Prepare for the Russian TCA, okay? So she went to Russia to play some because she had to make more money. They make more money in other countries. That's Amen. that's a that's so that, a that's the reason why she was going. To Russia. That's a part of it. Cool. Well, anyway, she packing her luggage and <coughs> she decided that she needed a cartridge of cannabis <laughs> for her vape. So I hear. In a, in other words, she needed a weed. She needed her weed. She needed her <laughs> her her uh, uh what is it, Reggie? <laughs> Stop it. We're not going there. Go ahead. She needed it. She needed it. She put it in the bag. <laughs> she pulls up to Russia. We having you tell stories every time. Because this is funny. She Go ahead. She pulls up to Russia. She pulls up to and Russia. They said, oh, no. <laughs> no, said, ma'am. You ain't coming in here with you're that. You're not coming. No, you, here, you're not. Up in here with your kids. <laughs> You ain't coming in. You don't go make it through the game. Up in here. That's right. what happened. So that's pretty much what happened. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of posts. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> and people been saying, you know, they think it's dumb. Yeah. That she gotta go to jail for cannabis because what is her cannabis doing to anybody else? <laughs> Them are the posts that I'm seeing. The Them people, are the posts. <laughs> but, the people are upset. So they want y'all to leave her alone and let her smoke in peace. <laughs> that is what I'm not saying it. That's what the people are saying. So she got sentenced to nine years. Nine, bro. That's nine, a long time. Nine years in a Russian prison, and they do not care about this girl at all it's bad so it it was some it was some things that people said they said if it was lebron james he would have been back in a minute yeah. that's factual that ain't right though that ain't right but, um yeah. if it was if it stephen curry anybody with hazel eyes is coming home anybody with hazel eyes coming home mm. They're going to be with their families, but here's what, here's what is happening. They said that they want to do a trade. They want to do a trade with somebody. Who was the who was the person? I saw different conflicting things. I heard it one one column or whatever you want to call it. What yeah, they, yeah. They said it was like a switch with a U.S. Marine, right? And like a drug dealer, a Russian drug dealer, yes, or something like that. I don't know. That's one thing I saw. It's conflicting, and that's I interesting. I didn't even know. Was like a spy. I didn't even know. They did trades. Me either. This is <laughs> this is the first time I'm like, whoa, this is a thing. Y'all so, trading prisoners. So the government just do what they want to do. Like y'all trading prisoners like the new Uno where you can swap hands. <laughs> <laughs> they said, you take my prisoner and I'm going to take yours. This is like Jesus wow. and Barabbas all over again. Wow. Who you want? That's take wild. one. Take your pick. Take your pick. Man. That's wild. So they, they, they wanted to get someone. Well, I heard a spy. I heard that on. T I don't know what side of TikTok I was on, yeah. 
But anyway, they said it was a spy, whatever. They trying to get someone. But then you said it was a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. So U.S. has one of their drug dealers? So. so they want the drug dealer and back. They want to keep them. <laughs> they said, Brittany can stay over there in Russia. We're going to keep your drug deal. That ain't right. Oh. Give them a drug dealer back. What y'all going to do with him <laughs> in our facilities, in our prisons? That That is my thing. That is my thing. So if if you have a if you have a prisoner on one side, you are okay to say, okay, I'm gonna trade you. So, but this here's the thing. Uh, it was someone I saw a video of this. They were saying nine years is actually what they expected. Really? That what they expected, they're gonna do the ultimate time for that, whatever. So one person said Brittany is thinking that is that is the next step to her getting back home for the trade. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I just think nine years is... It's, it's a lot. It's a long time. That's a lot. It's a long time. But yeah, the people were saying, um, leave the girl and her weed alone. <laughs> and and then they're, they're, they're saying that the laws here are different now because yes. years ago, this would have been a thing, but now we are... I know we have a dispensary near us that everybody mistakes for a breakfast restaurant. So yes. people walking in there Crazy. thinking that they're getting eggs Cur and they coming out high and don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what happened. So things, the laws have changed in the U.S. We do have dispensaries and stuff. It's more acceptable. Yeah. So so the real question is, or did you have more stuff no, you want no, to no, get no. to? The real question is that people ask, since smoking weed isn't in the Bible, mm -hmm. what, literally, what, is that a sin or is it, since it's legal now, how can I do that, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My, when I look at this, right, obviously, um, we can look at it and say like, okay, something, we probably shouldn't be doing this off the, off the rip, yeah. right? Um, if you have to ask, is it really a sin? It pro you probably shouldn't be doing it, right? Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> if we go from the legal point of view, legal point of view, um, states say, yes, it's legal. Um, then we look at scripture. I know Paul wrote it. I can't remember which, uh, which book this was in. It mm -hmm. said everything that is um, basically everything that is legal is not beneficial. Everything that is permissible isn't beneficial. Yeah. So from that, <clears throat> just from that scripture, from the legal point of view, right, um, that tells us, okay, probably shouldn't be doing it, but let's go back. Um, let's go back to another scripture. Um, I should have brought these scriptures out. Um, first Timothy. Corinthians. You said First Timothy, you said Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 6. Which one are you talking about? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I think we just read it, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Everything, that's why I was clicking. Everything um, that is basically permissible is not beneficial. But then <clears throat> also Bible talks about not being controlled by something. Yeah. When you give, um, when you are smoking weed, right, um, or you, you're smoking the ganja and you're drinking on the liquor, mm. right? You were giving yourself mm. to something. Mm. There's a reason why they got spirits on the liquor store. Ah, that's deep. <laughs> so you're giving yourself to something, right? <clears throat> so with that, when you, whatever you are doing, right? Whatever drug you're doing, you are literally giving it permission to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. um, you can see when someone is drinking because they start acting weird. It's like, yeah. yo, what's going on? Like, chill out. You know, calm down. Um, because they are not acting as their self because they have given themselves to mm -hmm. something. So I just think in the church, in the church, I think we don't we don't talk about stuff that we're scared to talk about. Yeah. But and I think when we talk about sin, we also need to talk about our heart and our facts. Because um, like it's not a sin to drink wine. Mm -hmm. Exactly. However, it is a sin to get drunk. Exactly, and that's a huge one. And it's it's okay to mm -hmm. eat cakes, cookies, ice creams, and enjoy food, but it's a, it's not okay to be a glutton. Okay, now we now we talking real. Now we talking <laughs> gluttony yes. that we don't talk about. Yes. So so it's like 
just because you can do something mm-hmm. doesn't mean you can abuse it. Yes. Same thing with oxy. Yes. Doctors give people oxy. They do. But that only you can abuse it. And exactly. Use it in a way that it wasn't intended to be used. Exactly. So, um, that's my thing. What's yeah. your intention? Yeah. And then why, another question is, why do you feel the need to do it? Facts. Because if you feel like you need it to get the ease off, Bingo. to not be stressed, is cannabis greater than my God? Come on, somebody. <laughs> what can <clears throat> cannabis do for you? Come on. Come on. That God cannot do for come you. Come on. How are you getting lifted high? Are you high in the spirit? Are you high on that weed? Mm. And that and, <laughs> and that is the real thing you got to ask yourself. Yeah. Which one is taking you high? high, high oh, yeah. Because mm. when my God lifts me up, Ish-ka-tai. I don't come back down. <laughs> it's, a, it's a forever high. <laughs> <laughs> Never need it again. All right. <laughs> but look, here, like with that, with that, when you are depending on something, right? Because I hear this a lot. Uh, we we were at Breakaway, mm-hmm. and we had this amazing like talk with like freshmen and sophomores. <laughs> and one of the kids said, uh, "Why is smoking weed and getting?" <laughs> <laughs> Why is it bad when it he, feels so good? He was so real about yes. it. He was so like he was asking us for real. He was like, "But if it feels good, like." <laughs> What's the problem? What's the pro- I'm just having a good time. He was like, he was like, it just feels good to me. <laughs> and everything that makes you feel good, things that make your senses feel good, it's not always good for you, flesh. right? So for me, when she was talking about the food, um, Eris, <laughs> it was B. It was another time we were uh, we were in the car. It was after church. <laughs> it was Tuesday. It was yesterday. <laughs> Or no, it's it's Thursday now. Uh, it was two two days ago, and I was like, I just feel like getting some food that that I'm gonna regret later. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally what. I, and I was like, that is gonna that is gonna feel good for me right now. But I know when I get home, it's gonna be sitting right here, right. and I'm gonna be like, <clears throat> I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and B knows the look when I'm like this because I can't breathe, and it's the sitting highest. and it's That's sitting it. right here. And I'm like, I can't breathe because I am, we are cutting down on fast food, but I, I still have the, I'm I like, I, I want, I want it in everything that, anything that calls out to you and you run to real Ooh. quick without even thinking about it. That's good. That might just be an idol. So like our, whatever, if it's drugs, alcohol, I know that's the topic for today, but whatever the thing is that is calling to you and you like, yo. I can't, like, whatever it is, you can plug in the sin that you, you're going through or even a mindset if someone says something and you just have to say it. Yeah. Like, you got to say, you got to cuss them out with, mm-hmm. with cuss words that sound good together. Mm-hmm. Some of y'all know how to cuss Ooh. and you need Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all, the cuss words just sound good coming off the lips. Mm-hmm. Cussing. But with that... Yeah, especially like when we talk about weed and all of that stuff in high school, it is so it's so normalized, mm-hmm. so normalized. Uh, if they wanted to ask if we were about to smoke in high school, they'd be like, "Yo, you good?" And we'd be like, "Yeah, let's go, let's go." Right? Um, but because it's so normalized, you don't even have to think about it because yeah. it's like everybody's doing it. It's nothing mm-hmm. wrong. Um, but yeah, I. With the Britney thing, I think it was very extreme to do nine years. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, with with that that's going on, I think we can look at it and say, <clears throat> maybe weed and drugs does give get us in a little bit of a pickle sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to say something that I think it might get me in a little trouble. Uh-oh, here we go. <clears throat> I told y'all. <laughs> I told you. She, been, she was good on the bonus episode. I- I'm scared on this one. I feel like weed gets pointed at a lot. Mm -hmm. But what about cigarettes, vapes, cigars? Is that not just as bad? Woo! That's a good question. Because Because that makes you feel a different way, too. You got to go closer because I see the signal. Bro, I got got to get used to being close to this. Yeah. But yeah. um, Crazy. Because people use that, too, the same way they use weed. Yep. Yep. 
And are we being good stewards of our health? In our bodies, bingo. When we use these things, because God cares about how we steward everything. Bingo. All of that, all of that stuff, all of those things. You are, in a way, you're dependent on it, yeah. right? You're dependent on it. And <clears throat> cigarettes. I've seen people that are literally they hate smoking, mm-hmm. and they can't stop. And it's like they're like, I need to stop this, or. Uh, people who drink a lot, yeah. I need to stop this, right? Um, but even going to like the cigars, it's like I don't feel anything. I just feel a little buzz, mm-hmm. right? Um, <clears throat> your heart and your intention of doing it. Mm-hmm. Why? Yep. Like, why do I you feel, feel like the need to the do it? Thing. Yep. I feel like it's easier to call weed a sin because you can get in trouble for it. Mm-hmm. You can't get in trouble for cigarettes or cigars, right? So I feel like. A lot of people turn an eye to that and they're like, "Oh, it's not a sin because we can't get in trouble for it." Yep. But is it really? That's real. Because I think we, even as Christians, we base our, is it is it okay to do or not to do on culture? Mm-hmm. If you base your opinion on things like, if is it good or not to do on culture, <clears throat> then you, you will have an updated, updated uh, law for your life yep. every single, every single year. Because mm-hmm. it's this year, it's, it's, okay to smoke weed but five years it five years ago it wasn't okay yeah. but now it's recreational and now we can go further and further and further and further and further um plug in your controversial topic um and now your opinion is based on a moving target your your opinion and your uh convictions that was the word i was trying to say your convictions mm-hmm. should be on something that never changes yeah. it can't change your convictions just can't like can't just continue to change, like, uh, uh, right? And if God is progressing you in your way of thinking, right, um, that's okay. If unless it's contrary to the Word of God, yeah. then you're like, okay, now you just trip, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but your convictions have to come from something that never changes, and we all know that is in Jesus, right? And our firm foundation, we sing it all the time, mm-hmm. firm foundation, <laughs> right? But our foundation and our like ways of thinking has to come from something that doesn't change. So if he is saying don't give yourself over to something, yeah. he hasn't changed his mind <laughs> on what it's like a parent saying like uh, it's like a parent saying hey don't touch the stove. Then twenty minutes later they're like all right you can touch the stove I was just joking. It's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's he's not doing that yeah. like it's been the same and we change mm-hmm. and we say. Well, that's kind of outdated now, so we can we don't have to follow that. But I don't know. I just think culture is a moving target, and it's hard to follow 100%. because it, everything shifts. So, how do we? Here's a real question: How do we address this for even people that, let's say, you have a friend right at school, and they're trying to be, they're starting off. Yeah. You're trying to be a Christian. How do you address that for someone? And they still smoking weed, all this stuff, and they're still doing all of those different things that we know that are contrary to what God wants for us. How do we address that in someone that is just like, well, like I don't see anything wrong with it, and they're they're trying to get to know Christ. How do we address that? What would you do in that situation? I feel like for me, um, being the light in darkness, so mm-hmm. just being the example speaks a lot. Mm-hmm. Like. You don't have to be like um, weird about it mm-hmm. and make them feel, you know, terrible. But just yeah. speaking the truth about it and saying, "Hey, yo, that's I ain't. That's just something I don't do." Right. I like to be sober. <laughs> right. <laughs> like just saying. I like that to think straight. Makes them think, and it could open up a conversation where you Facts. know um, they talk to you about it. So I yep. think a lot of times, and this is with a lot of things, because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people feel like, well, how do I? Um, confront people who aren't living a Christian life and it's mm. like be the light like yeah. the light shines in darkness yep be the example yeah and that's that's real that's real um because I think if you if you show them first I think Christians can be they can come off yeah. the wrong way mm-hmm. because we're always like change the behavior change the behavior yeah. um and when you just go for the behavior first you don't get to the heart mm-hmm. Because you can tell somebody to do something and they'll do it because you're just yelling at them, yep. right? Because they're sick of you yelling, but their heart never changes. Mm-hmm. So if you start with 
a friendship in a relationship and say, hey, um, and you just be different. Yep. You be different. Um, <clears throat> and like you said, it opens it up for another conversation mm-hmm. where it's like, yo, why don't you ever go with us when we smoking? Mm-hmm. Um, then you're like, well, this is, I don't, I don't rock. You know what I'm saying? I don't do that. <clears throat> and one thing that I've seen too, like when you're addressing that, um, you don't got to lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like when people are starting to be Christians, <laughs> They be lying. I'm allergic to weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allergic. <laughs> it's something with the stems. It make me break out. <laughs> <laughs> you do not have to lie. <laughs> you don't have to lie because then it comes. <laughs> it comes. <laughs> I'm allergic to weed. <laughs> and if you gotta use it to get That's out that jam. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 you don't. You do not have to lie because then you <laughs> perpetuate the same behavior. You're just saying, you're just making up excuses. Then they like, yo, this part, like you're not even being real. So once you start to say like, once you start to say, hey, you probably shouldn't do that. When you finally get the guts to do it, then they like, bro, you weren't saying nothing. Right. I thought you were just busy, bro. You know what I'm saying? So like, you don't, you don't have to, <laughs> to lie to try to feel cool. Mm-hmm. You don't. You don't. You don't. I for me, like even when I was going through that stupid stuff that I was doing in high school, the people that stood out to me, obviously because I had that the same heart, I was just being dumb. Um, but uh, the pe- people that stood out to me were people that were unapologetically different. Yeah. Where they said, "No, I'm not doing that," right? Um, and even in different groups, like I, I loved seeing people that said, "Y'all can do that, but I'm not." Right. Right, the people like Daniel, the people like uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like all of all of those people that stood in the middle of culture and said, "Y'all can do that, cool. Mm-hmm. I'm still here, but not doing that." Yeah. Right, King Nebuchadnezzar saying, "Bow down." They like, "I'm standing with y'all, but I'm not bowing down, bro. That's not that's not my God, bro. <laughs> like, like you tripping, bro? I'm not." <laughs> I am not <laughs> I am not about to bow down to some fake God. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like the same thing that that in culture, like as we're going as you guys are in school now, right? Um, you don't have to lie. You don't have to lie to try to feel cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and be like, well, I just want them to like me. They will like you if you're real with them. Yep. If you're real with them. And at the end of the day, if they're not rocking with you for making a decision that that benefits your life. They're not the people you, you should be around anyway. And I think we also need to define real because sometimes yeah. people think being real is being offensive mm-hmm. and rude. Yep. And that's not real. Like, I feel like sometimes Christians beat up people more than Jesus. <laughs> it's like Jesus is extending grace. Yes. Jesus <clears throat> is accepting progress. Yes. Yes. And we're like, stop, 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 stop. You yeah. suck. You're the worst. You're right. terrible. You're going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> And Jesus is like, bruh, bruh, chill. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and it's Jesus was so, he was so strategic with his his uh, confrontations. Mm-hmm. He'll flip over a couple tables, then he go eat with the people. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like he was like, <laughs> he would he would come in, call them vi- like you brew the vi- Well, that was John the Baptist, but um, he was calling these these people like, yo, y'all. Y'all are hypocrites. He going going off, going off. He'd be like, all right, so where y'all about to go eat? Are we going to y'all house? All right, cool. Yeah. And he he still ate with them. It was still was real. Yeah, uh, time and place for everything. Time there's and place. There's a time to stand firm. Yeah. And there's a time to say, cast the first stone. Yep. And yep. Yep. So Exactly. And he knew that. For everything. And he knew that because he was... Number one, he had a relationship with the father, obviously. That was normal for him. Mm-hmm. Um, but he would continue. He was all, all man first. Well, he was all God first, and he was all man, right? So he still had to be strategic in going to the father for guidance, good. right? Going to the father for guidance. So when you are, uh, when you have people that are living these lifestyles and you, and maybe you were in it, Here's another thing. Here's another thing. Um, maybe you were in it and you were smoking right with them and you were drinking right with them. And maybe you were you were in the same group that was saying, yeah, we having sex with all these people. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe you were in the same group and now God has changed your mind. Don't be afraid to say, don't be afraid to say, hey, um, and number one, you will know where they are so you'll have compassion. Mm. 
Mm, uh, but good. but the second thing, the second thing is, uh, don't be afraid to say, "Hey, God has changed me, and I I want you to be changed too," because I was right here with you. I was doing the same stuff. So you have to be careful um, that you have the same compassion that other people have for you. Yeah. Um, because if you don't have that and you trying to beat them over the head and say, oh, you going to hell, right? You you know what I'm saying? All of those different things. Yeah. Uh, you got to be willing to have compassion for the people that um, that are doing those same things that, that you were doing. 100%. You know what I mean? Compassion is um, huge, man. Yeah. So empathy. That, empathy. Because if, if God didn't. It's a gift, for real. It's a gift. That's one of your. No, I yours is mercy. Mercy. Mercy, mm-hmm. <clears throat> one of your spiritual gifts. Um, I need that one too, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Develop that in me, Lord. Um, but yeah, so that is a that is a huge thing. With that, we kind of touched a lot of stuff with yeah, this with went, that. This went wild. We went wrong. Hey, <laughs> it is what it is. We talk about Jesus now. This this is where the podcast is really about right. to be. We can talk about Brittany Look, Griner. Last time we did more yes. culture. This time, Amen. yes, yes. It's Alex. we are taking we we want to take. <clears throat> The word to culture, yeah. right? Um, we want to come from a biblical point of view because y'all watch, y'all see all this stuff, y'all see all this stuff. So we want to talk about it, and we don't want y'all to um, get your uh, basis of opinion from a, a worldly point of view. Yeah. We want you to uh, come from a place knowing that God, um, God sees you, He knows what you're going through, and He wants to walk alongside you. In whatever um, is happening, but yeah, man, I think we, I think we good on this. We talked, yeah, we, we talked. This, ta- this, this is a good one. But um, put the yeah. weed down. <laughs> no, you cannot have another blunt tonight. Put it down. No more. No. <laughs> Pray. <laughs> Lay off the weed, man. Come on, man. <clears throat> but for real, if if you are if you are in like. And you're battling with that. You battling with drinking. You're battling with smoking. We're praying for you. It's a um, yeah, it's a process, and we want you to know that um, we are here. We're here for you. I don't want you to feel like you have to uh, go to a substance uh, to get uh, what God has already given you access to. To people that care for you, that can talk. Um, if you feel like you are going to that because you can't talk to anyone, uh, just know that you have leaders. You have. Um, you have myself, you have Candace, you have my wife, you have Anthony, you have all of our leaders uh, that are here um, to help you in that process. And so, if you need a place, yes, come to Calvary. Nicole. Come to Calvary, yeah, <laughs> come to Calvary because some of the people that's they what they may here. not go to this church. So we're in Calvary, Calvary Church, Naperville. Um, that's in Illinois, right? So even if you're watching this from a different state. If you watch this from a different state and you just clicked on Spotify and you saw, see, that's the problem. Or you, you clicked on YouTube and you saw this, you saw these two black people on the uh, <laughs> YouTube and you like, man, I love black 50, people. 50. <laughs> you might not tell. Yeah, she 50-50, <laughs> but, but the black side it's strong. is strong. <laughs> the black side is strong. The black side is strong. I'm all black. Listen up. My, my wife is white. Irish. Yeah, but it was, that ain't enough. I'm black. Okay, um, but yeah. Anyway, that has nothing to do with nothing it. Nothing at all. <laughs> but <laughs> but if you if you don't have a church, uh, come hang out with us. Um, we pursue God, and we we love we love being in the presence of God um, and being around people that love God, um, being around people that don't know God. Yeah. Right? If you've never if you've never experienced God, you never you don't even know what it means to follow Jesus. Mm-hmm. We're here for you, mm-hmm. right? Um, and we want you to be a part of the family. Um, Wednesday nights, we talking about it. Yeah, Wednesday night, seven p.m. Life groups on Sundays at eleven a.m. Yep. Fourth Sunday, we take off. Um, but yeah, we want to get to know you guys, and we're excited to continue to do this podcast. We're gonna have some crazy episodes. I already feel it. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited to continue to do this. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, you got anything to say? No, we'll catch y'all next time, man. Let's go. See, that's problem. Page. That's the problem, see that's the problem That's the problem, see that's the problem